Hello everyone, welcome to Heart's Happiness Podcast. The place where I, Manpreet, share my journey of healing intergenerational family trauma to help you to understand your story. I share a bunch of tools and tips that will transform your mental health and allow you to find your own heart's happiness. So exciting, right? Each episode will cover one of three areas. One, raising awareness of what this trauma actually is and how it hides in our lives. Two, tools, tips, support, lots of different things that I've used to get better and heal from this trauma. And three, I'll be connecting you with so many specialists and therapists and coaches as guests on my show. So we are going to transform your mental health and empower you to take your healing by the hands and move forward. Welcome back for another episode of Heart's Happiness and our second episode of my International Women's Day series, Women That Have Turned Their Healing Journey Into Their Purpose, is what we're talking about for these uh, five episodes this month. And today I'm speaking to my very new friend that I have made over Instagram who resonated with my story and it turns out we have like a really similar story and she's out there in her business, changing the world, and I wanted her to come in and share with you what she does and her story of how she got there. So I'll be speaking to Pally in a moment. And also, I just wanted to let you know that I am opening up five spaces for one-to-one coaches in March 2023 and April 2023. I don't have them open all year round anymore because I have limited spaces. So you need to book in a call with me to take one of those spaces or drop me an email if you're interested in doing your own healing work so you can find your purpose and the reason why you're here you have to do the healing work that we speak about in this episode to be able to get there so if you need help to do that healing work to heal from your past trauma to feel happier in your life right now and to create a life that you love then drop me a dm on instagram or email me at manpria at heartshappiness.co.uk and we can set up a call to see if my coaching approach suits you. These are my one-to-one coaching spots for three months and six months. So we meet every week to help you to really make the big changes you want to see in your life. So drop me a DM if you are interested and I'm going to pass you over to Pally. Hello, my love. Did you want to introduce yourself and explain what it is that you do? Yeah, so I'm Pally and I'm a conscious business and marketing coach and I help um, women who are coaches, healers, service providers, really become like a vortex for wealth, freedom and impact. And that's because of my own story with what I've gone through in my past, which I know that we'll go into a little bit more in this um, in this episode. And my fundamental belief is that women should be able to live life on their own terms. And I think that's what my business stands for, what it represents. And it's really the message that I want to get across to the world, that it's okay to live life on your own terms and it's okay to create wealth in in your life in your business because when you create wealth you open opportunities for yourself and for your family and for your community and you know that sense of control is then in your hands instead of in someone else's yeah it definitely gives you lots of opportunities doesn't it and I hear this a lot from people that um that like to help people and like to serve and then there's, they'll say, but I'm not interested in money. Like money is not a big thing for me. And it just makes me cringe every single time. Be- not because like I'm like hoarding of money and whatever, but it's yeah. just like, why do you not deserve? And are you not worthy of money for what you do? Because you have such a gift and you're helping people and you've got such a great heart that you want to do that for free. But at the end of the day, when you're paid well for it, that means you can invest in yourself, you can take care of yourself, you can go on great holidays, you can have fabulous experiences that nurture you and fill you up so you can go out and serve. And I just think like money's just energy, right? Like we have such a weird relationship with it. But like you said, wealth, um, it opens doors for us and where women some women are in abusive situations where they feel that they can't leave their situation because of money this opens up doors and just by believing that you're worthy of money right so exactly exactly because my when I think back to my family and the experiences that we went through money was very much kept in the pockets of the men in my family growing up um, so we had a family business 
And my mom and my grandma worked extraordinarily hard for this business and were never compensated financially for it. Wow. And I saw the toll that it took on my mom. I think my mom didn't actually have a bank account until she, until my dad passed away. I was 20 years old. Wow. Bizarre, right? Yeah. She, she, she had been in this country for 20 years and didn't have her own bank account, which is crazy to me. And I think to myself, like, had she have had the, had she have had the opportunity to have that wealth for herself, then that power dynamic would have changed in in that household. And my mom may have been able to make different decisions. She wasn't able to do that because that money was kept from her. She she worked so hard, so hard, grinded every day. I mean, this woman was like a machine, right? And it's not, yeah. And it's no wonder that she became the kind of person she became because she was very mentally unstable around the time my dad passed away and now is okay thank god like she's okay but you know she really struggled for a long time and as a result of that we struggled because our relationship with our with her was actually really strained and was really difficult because she just didn't have any control and had she have had you know some sort of control in terms of her finances maybe she wouldn't be where she is today you know yeah. and she wouldn't got, wouldn't have got herself into that state Definitely. I mean, they like this is what I wanted to talk because I know me and you have been chatting in DMs about like our ancestors, the generations before us, the women before us um, that went through so much. And like we're both people that have done our own healing work and breaking those patterns. Um, But just having a moment to talk about life for those women and their stories, especially with it being International Women's Day, like the women that came before us that did not have the options that we have. Yeah, and we've had to be brave to step into that because not everybody's doing that right now. Um, and we will definitely celebrate us too. But like just talking <laughs> about them, because like you said, your mum has literally, it is not safe for her to have a bank account. That is her reality. Yeah. Like it's literally wasn't safe for her. You know, when we go back to our grandparents, grandmothers, you know, it wasn't safe for them to not get married to someone they don't know. Like for mm-hmm. us of South Asian background, you know, it's not safe for them to maybe even go to certain people's houses. Like there is so much that like they've been disempowered and so much trauma and so much pain that they've been through, which means that maybe they weren't the best with us. And that's come through to us and our stories, which I'm sure we'll get through to. But um, yeah, it kind of like when I think about like that generation, grandma and pet and mothers, like just how much they've actually been through, um, and it, how like caught they are between these two worlds as well because we've got like to, we've got so much more available to us and they just didn't have that um so it gets them really stuck yeah definitely and I think it's a big reason why I started my business you know yeah, I, yeah. I completely appreciate that my my mom and the women before me didn't have the same opportunities as me my mom was born in India she moved here when she got married to my dad and everyone before her was born in India and they had a different way of thinking yeah they completely different way of thinking and my mom was actually brought up in quite traumatic situation as well so I see that now as an adult I can appreciate that yeah we had a difficult relationship growing up I understand now because I've done that work through EFT through so many different modalities and I've come to this conclusion and this place of really understanding that the time was different I have more opportunities though I grew up in a very strict household and in a very controlled way with with my granddad I was able to break out of that because I think just having like access to the media having you know conversations with people from different cultures and having access to different types of people actually opened my eyes and made me see that there's so much more to the world than what I was conditioned to believe because growing up I actually wasn't really allowed to go out like I I, I didn't go to birthday parties um I, I I'd go to school I'd come home and that was it and I remember my friends used to say like she doesn't do anything like she's not allowed right and mm-hmm. I, I remember very um small amount of experiences where I actually got to go to someone's birthday party or going on school trips and things like that wasn't really allowed to do stuff like that so I was very 
controlled in the way I was brought up. And I was like, <laughs> you know, like a bird in a cage and just want to get out. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to get out. And I think like I spent a lot of my 20s doing that, like getting myself out of that cage because even though I was very entrepreneurial, like from a very young age, I remember saying to myself <clears throat> that I'm going to build a really big business. I'm going to do something like that no one else has done in my family. Right? I'm going to be the first to do this. I was the first to go to university. I was the first to start a business um, in terms of the women in the family. And yeah, just breaking out of all of that stuff that really kept me trapped from a young age but there was there were moments right that led me to do this there were really big moments like my dad died when I was 20 years old my granddad said something on the back of my dad dying which led me to basically cut my relationship off with him for five or six years Mm. and that was a really big moment because no one had ever done that no one had ever stood up to him Mm. no one had ever said no enough is enough like Mm. that moment was really pivotal and then I spent most of my 20s just exploring freedom and yeah Yeah. Yeah, like it seemed like I was rebelling but for me it was just wanting to live my life be with friends and do normal things right and that's what I did for my 20s and then when I came into my 30s when I found stability emotionally when I started doing the healing work because I don't think I really I did heal somewhat in my 20s but I think I was spiritually bypassing a lot of my trauma and I was just like just meditate your way through it just meditate your way yeah, through it you could do that. yeah it didn't didn't work um so it finally caught up to me in my 30s um around the same time I started my business I ended up uh being diagnosed with um an autoimmune condition which I have finally healed from and I feel like I'm in a much better place now but you know that that illness and my business actually brought up a lot of the trauma because you start your business and you're like oh my god now I need to show up I need to use my voice I'm scared I'm scared to actually speak because I've been conditioned to believe that speaking is dangerous yeah and I'm not because when yeah I'm I'm not allowed to speak because if I speak I could be disowned I could be you know um what's the word subjected to emotional and physical abuse like this is what I was going through as a child if I would speak up this is you know it was dangerous for me to actually use my voice and it was dangerous for me to actually show myself like I used to hide in the house from my granddad that's how it was for me growing up like it was quite scary and I didn't feel safe so my business actually brought up a lot and I think that's why my business growth has been slow but I'm okay with that because I think there's a there's a time and a place for everything to happen and until I didn't deal with what was going on I wasn't going to really be able to step into my power and into what I want to do and what I want to share with the world and why I want to do it. Yeah, definitely. Well, I think this is the thing. When you start following your inner guidance and you're obviously being led to do your own work, um, then the next la- layer of healing happens, doesn't it? Because it, like the business has forced you to look into corners of your trauma that you weren't before and now you've had to heal those layers. And um, like I've definitely noticed that I didn't, I was not healing in my 20s. I was just doing the same as everybody else. Um, and it was only in the in my 30s when I started to do the work and work on myself and then when I felt better I felt like I could do the to to go into the business world and share share what I'd learned and help people but yeah very similar to you lots of things started to come up you know things around massively around money um Mm -hmm. you know just not feeling safe um to um get charged for my services for to ask for money for my services to do a job where it's all about me and what Mm I provide like am I good enough to do that and there has been like a lot of work that's had to happen where I have to go into the belief and the trauma that that it came from and some of a lot of that actually was not even mine so in uh, being the daughter of immigrants really affected me like my parents were super middle class like they both had jobs we had two cars we went on holiday like I was not brought up in poverty But my body and my nervous system, everything felt like I was because my mom and dad Mm -hmm. were terrified of money, like my entire life with them because of their struggles when they came to this country. And it's like so much of their um, 
trauma was living through me and you know in my life and that was really coming out when I decided to be an entrepreneur and like at different stages different things have come out like recently it's so funny what you just said about speaking your voice because that came up for me so much just even a week ago where I felt so afraid to to just speak my truth because Mm -hmm. I got triggered by something and um you know and then that pain that I'm feeling is not just my pain. It's the pain of like the women before me who are like, you know, throat chakra, not allowed to say anything and have to just accept it, accept life. And I think um, like that's, that's what's the mad thing about healing is you do really start to heal these other layers that are way past your own story. Um, yeah. When you go deeper into like, um your journey which is what you did because I'm sure you were feeling good for a little while you know like when you've done a bit of work on yourself and then we decided to start a business <laughs> I could have had a coffee yeah. but my nervous system was all right I think <laughs> yeah I feel I feel like when I when I started my business that entire year I felt so lost it was the year that COVID happened 2020 and you know you'd think that I'd be on cloud nine just had a, a little baby you know I'm happy like Manny's at home with me that Manny's my partner you know he gets to spend all this time with me and and with my daughter and I still felt so lost it was like I was looking for answers in all of the wrong places but you know so many like what you just said about so many of those um wounds that you carry from childhood like not being your own That is definitely so true. That played out for me massively, right? When it came to charging what I thought, you know, I should be charging for my services, uh, allowing other people to dictate what I should be charging, almost like giving my power away in every situation because I'd grown up seeing my mom not having her own money and working really hard. So she was essentially working for free. Mm. And like, I think, I think sometimes like she she did that her entire life like when she was married she did that in her entire life and it was almost drilled into her you're doing it for the family you're doing it for the family but what was she getting out of it she was just getting used and and as a free being, resource <laughs> yeah exactly it's a free resource right and that really played out in my business I was charging super low prices last year like ridiculously low considering I had over 10 years of experience I was discounting everything that I had already learned and everything that I'd already you know I I knew that I could bring to the table because I was scared to charge more because I thought no one would pay me because I've seen it in my life women don't get paid they're just supposed to work for free yeah exactly especially when you're like an empath and you're just like so you know you've been doing it for free your whole life anyway helping people it's just like part of the and process. it was me yeah and it wasn't just my mom I also worked for the family business from a from a young age I think I was eight years old when I started working for the family business mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah what I know yeah <laughs> it was it was a factory like sewing oh, okay. like you know it was yeah. yeah the typical thing that Asians did back then um and I they used to make me sit on the machine and sew elastics like little elastic bands and yeah um, you know you'd think I'd be good at sewing now I'm really not I I do not want to touch another machine like (laughs) yeah you know and I just remember thinking you know I was always promised like oh you'll get like pocket money at the end of the week or you know we'll get you something nice to eat and those things really never played out so I was constantly conditioned to believe that you can give as much as you want and you can go above and beyond because I'm the type of person that always wants to give my all in the situation especially even if I'm just helping someone I like to go above and beyond but then it created this really like this this kind of uh, uh, imbalance of giving and receiving so I'd give so much but get very little back in return had to do a lot of that work to decondition myself from you know this belief that actually what I put out I'm allowed to be fairly compensated for that so this is a the work that I did in in 2021 and it's it's paying off in a big way now my business is thriving Mm -hmm. you know I've made the biggest sales I've ever made in my business in in the last few months and I I owe a testament to myself because I'm going to give myself credit here I did the work yeah Yeah. because you're clearing the trauma yeah exactly and and everyone else you're not just meditating you're actually clearing the trauma 
that's yeah I, i'm going into i'm going into the stuff that's really hard to go into yeah. and you know and it's not just it's not just you know these experiences with money but it's other beliefs that you hold around it as well so you know having something of value to say you know being able to do something you love and earn money doing it all of this stuff that you'd been brought up to believe was never going to happen for you because you saw yeah. your family not having those opportunities yeah and like I know it sounds cheesy but like doing your little bit to che- change the world like that feels yeah like really oh I don't think that's cheesy at all I think you know like, I like super amazing like today I was just doing a spreadsheet of like all the tasks I have and just to try to help my nervous system not freak out so much and I was like oh Monday I'll do this Tuesday I was and I was just thinking about when I worked in the corporate world and how like I used to spend a week achieving nothing mm-hmm. but, um like following whatever my managers wanted me to do complete waste of my skills I was so bored and I was just having this moment where like god every week of my business I freaking get so much done I give like value I like help people that I've never even met like how like I just had that moment of like this is so incredible I really do need to work a little bit less though because I'm a bit tired (laughs) and I'm working on that but that's like it's like amazing and and I think I've I've said this so much this week to like everyone my clients because I'm like we get one life what are we doing in the corporate world that we don't even enjoy our jobs our managers drive us mad we don't get paid enough money and we're just like gaslit to think that's the only option for us I mean you know you've been doing this for a little while like you said you've had the most successful year like um getting more paid more than maybe you were even getting paid like in your corporate world job yeah you know and we've been told since we were like little girls first of all women can't earn as much money money as men and secondly you know we can't be entrepreneurs and we can't be the boss and um you know like the amount of times I never got a promotion I'm pretty certain it was because I was brown and a girl a woman even and you know loads of things I was so bored in my job I was so like I could do so much more than they would ever pay me for yeah you know all of that you just you accept what you've been told and that's why you have to do the healing work to release the traumas and to release all the 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 conditioning that keeps you in lives that just don't make you happy yeah definitely and I think there's something around this idea of like having to work really really hard to get the result that you want and even then it might not come right (laughs) <laughs> that 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 belief like something I've really worked on like I don't know if um any of your listeners are into human design but I'm a projector right projectors are supposed to actually just chill out <laughs> and you know do the thing that they love speak that into existence yeah, and then just great. yeah just re- yeah just relax and lean into you know our own kind of genius and and I'm a I'm a big believer in human design now. The more I look into it, the more I'm like, yeah, that's me. And I remember overworking myself to a point where I wouldn't even take lunch breaks. And, you know, I would just, it was like a workhorse, just keep going, just keep going, just keep going. No wonder my body shut down the year I took, you know, that time off when I had maternity leave um, and I was still working. My body was like, nope, no more. You know, I, I'm not, sorry, I'd come back from maternity leave when when I got sick. And uh, my body was like, you can't do this anymore. Like it's, Mm -hmm. you can't keep overworking and giving and giving and giving and just feel shit about what you're doing and feel like you're not getting the kind of wealth that you deserve for that. I think consciously I knew that subconsciously I was okay with carrying on, (laughs) you know, like, yeah, consciously I was like, I want something different. I want something more. But subconsciously, I'm like, well, this is what you've always grown up with. So you'll yeah. carry on unless you actually consciously make a decision to change this. Yeah. And I'd, I'd had enough, to be honest. Yeah. I'd had enough. Well, and I was like, and your body sort of forced you as well, right? Like, it, yeah, it made you stop. I mean, I've certainly, you know, noticing that my body is like giving me a lot of signs that's like, okay, it's time to heal your body. And I have been, but not enough. And yeah, I think that's just like, um, yeah, it's just, learning to sit back and to be able to take care of you because you can't keep being the workhorse that you were when you were young or when your mum was and you know and and not get anything back that's not what life's about of course no it's not help people and change the world but not at the detriment of your own happiness and health yeah exactly right and I think for anybody listening to this that um you know isn't 
doing what we're doing and is creating businesses and things like that. This still shows up these trauma wounds, these patterns of, you know, programming and belief systems from the past are playing out in your like live in your normal job as well. Like, are you going, are you getting paid right? Are you going for the work opportunities that you deserve? Are you um, in relationships where you're treated well? All of these, like it affects everything, doesn't it? Like it does. Yeah. Because Everything. You're not just overworking in in your job or in your business. You might be overworking to the point where after you finished your day, are you going home and cleaning the house and then doing all the dishes and making all the food for everyone, you know, while your your partner or the men in your family are just sitting there relaxing because they've had a really hard day at work too. Mm. You know, this yeah. does play out, and especially in Asian cultures. I've seen it happen where now there's an expectation women can work but you also have to continue doing the housework. Yeah. And you will be made to feel guilty if you don't. Mm, you know? um, and my mother-in-law is not Asian. She's from, she's white. And she's very similar. She's been brought up with like three brothers. She's the only girl. But again, it's similar. It's very similar. So even yeah. though, like you know, we're probably a bit more extreme in the way that we've been raised. But, you know, she was like, they didn't want to send her to university. She was really, really clever. But they were like, that's just a waste. Like, you're just going to get married and have children. So why should you do that? And she was really bright and really clever. And she still holds on to the beliefs of that her not being good enough. And, you know, there's something being wrong with her. And that's like, you know, deep from when she was a childhood that, you know, her mum didn't believe in her and whatever. But her mum was just repeating whatever she'd been told. Like she'd been a housewife and had children. And, you know, so it's like it's all over the world. It's in all of our family stories. Yeah. And even like our grandmas who like, you know, my grandmas were adorable, but they were so freaking sexy like themselves. Like they were so, yeah. you know, oh, you're not allowed to do this. You're not allowed to do this. You can't dress in this way you can't speak in this way like I remember being a little girl and thinking that the women in my house are insane letting the men talk to them like they're shit like I remember being five and looking at my granddad he like wet my grandma with like a hose because he's just drunk and like being horrible to her laughing and it just broke my heart because she didn't say or do or anything and I just remember like being like you know that's so wrong like how can you treat you like that and she just told me sharp yeah innately I think we know right even as young kids we know that that is not okay like we I think we we defaulted well yeah yeah we're we're defaulted as in a state of well-being when we're born I think like yeah of course and and then we just get messed up because we see these experiences of people mistreating others like as a child you don't see man woman like color you don't see those things you all you see is people and as we grow we're conditioned that men are supposed to act like this and women are supposed to act like this and it's sad it's really sad because I think we should be able to do and be who we want to be and you know of course there's there's that level of guidance that you want to give your children but not to the detriment of how they might feel about themselves yeah, because like later on in life, this beautiful essence that's them. That's yeah, them. exactly. And basically, you're going to try to put like whatever you, you know, what what didn't go right with your life, you're trying to make it better with them. Like even yeah. like trying, you know, I can already. I'm trying to have a baby, and I'm already trying to give this child a perfect nervous system to be created. And I'm not doing really yeah. it. And um, you know, and it's just like, but that's their experience and their growth and their journey and you know their soul and what they're here for. But um. Yeah, I just think like with with growing up, seeing things that were so wrong, like you as a little girl, seeing that your mom's tired, that nobody's taking care of her and, you know, mm-hmm. she, she's exhausted. Like we saw those things. We even said they were wrong or that we didn't agree with them. Then we were told time and time again that, you know, be quiet, you know, and and, and it being so unsafe for us to be our true selves. Mm-hmm. Like the women in our lives have already accepted that they can't be themselves and that's just normal. And then they're like doing, then they're putting that onto other people. It's like the craziest brainwashing I've ever seen. Like it's, it is. It's like mad brainwashing, isn't it? You know, let it is. make you work constantly for me, give you no money and you be okay with it. And then you go and clean and take care of her. Let you be okay with that. 
Like, isn't yeah. that just mad that that, it that is bizarre. level of brainwashing that has gone on in society and in our cultures to make that okay? Yeah, it is, it is bizarre. And I think, you know, in my family situation, it's definitely to the extreme. <laughs> like, you know, yes. when I when I think about like my 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 cousins and people who didn't live in that situation, they didn't quite have it as bad. But you know, my my situation is definitely extreme. Like when I tell people about it, it's actually you know a lot. But the feelings are still the same, right? So whether it's extreme in your house or not in someone else's, that feeling is still coming up for you. It's relative, right? So you know your story might not look like mine but you you may still have the same feeling around it that you know we did grow up in in a situation where there was just unfair treatment because of the the different genders like I remember growing up feeling like I wasn't really wanted because I was a girl you know and then when my sister came along that was really sad for her as well because you know she was even more unwanted because she was the second girl and then when my brother came along it was like she's done it right this time she finally had a boy you know and I really had that fear when I had my own baby like you know what are people gonna say if I have a girl and then I had a girl and I was like fearless about it because I was like I'm never ever gonna make her feel like she's not wanted she's going to know that she is loved and she is wanted and she can do whatever she wants right she's got a passion for something she can go after and we're gonna fully support that whatever that looks like for her yeah and I'm lucky that I've well I I don't want to say lucky because I I feel like I've worked really hard to find someone who doesn't think the same as well you have to do the work yeah I'm sure yeah yeah of course yeah and I I worked really hard to create this intentional life for myself now where I have all of these opportunities because they didn't happen by accident this this person didn't just fall out of thin air yeah I had to be in the right yeah I had to be in the right energy to to be with someone who was open to having an equal relationship with me Mm. you know who was open to wanting to support me in this business because I think if I didn't have that I probably wouldn't have started this business to be honest I probably wouldn't be in the in the relationship (laughs) like I said you would have had to do healing work to be with him because he is not the energy of the men that you were raised with, right? No, he's not. He's so and, different. Yeah. So different. And and initially, I don't know if you had a, a period where you were gravitating towards men that were of the same No, age. never. <laughs> well, never, I, yeah, I was lucky. I, <laughs> yeah, in that sense. I did, but in a way that, like, was an obvious. So I was yeah. very aware that, like, drunk men are not the people I want to hang out with. And, like, I never looked at people that looked like my dad. My dad was, like, short and a bit fat. So I was never attracted to anyone that looked like him. Probably not anybody that shouted. But, like, the energy of him was similar. Like, they were can be quite controlling. They were very much about their own needs. Mm-hmm. They were, like, um, like, gaslighting, like, denying my reality. I was always chasing after their love. So before I'd done my work on myself, because I, I went into, like, those 30, like, into my 30s, um. I was attracting the same yeah it was only from me facing myself in the mirror and being like what are you doing it's like the same man but with different in different bodies that I had to go and heal because that energy was transferring right yeah yeah exactly so I had to go and I think in a really weird way he died so it's like I was looking for him I feel like I was looking for him everywhere yeah sad. and um you know and it's only then when when you do the healing work just like what you're talking about with your business and you're going to the wounds and you're doing the release and everything that I was able to really consciously see what I was doing and consciously mm-hmm. see what my pattern was and what actually I needed for me and like you say you know you've created this intentional life yeah conscious of your wounds you're conscious of what you need and you are intentionally creating that reality with a man that's you know works for you and works for your energy system and your story yeah. and like and and choosing to like live your life in a certain way and I think and that again that is the beauty of healing because you actually uncover who you truly are and then you're able to create that life in alignment with that like so for me yeah I didn't I chose not to be with someone from my own background yeah it was better for me and you know, I choose to live very far from where I live, where I was raised, because it's better for me. And people think I might think I'm crazy because we don't really know anyone here. But I love that. <laughs> so yeah. Like, and again, it's those intentionally creating the life that suits you and your 
your reality and everything that happened. And I think um, lots of people recently have said to me, which is why I did a, a Instagram post on it. Well, you're really lucky. It's like I'm not lucky. This is no, like it's not about luck, <laughs> isn't it? Like I'm like I'm always like I get offended by that statement because, as you know, like we are intentionally creating this. We're intentionally making these lives a reality. We're intentionally we are to have the wealth yeah people to have the relationships that we have to all of those things and like you said and that's what what you've been doing and it's something to be so proud of and it's available to absolutely every one of us it is it is and I think I didn't realize I was doing some healing work around this from a very young age around the men in my family because Mm. I'd always known that I don't want to be with anyone like the men in my family I'd always known that because I'd seen what they were like they were very aggressive violent um too much alcohol like you know, just a lot of toxic things that I didn't want to be around. And I remember um, I had a conversation with someone when I was 17 and she opened my eyes up to spirituality in a way that it never happened before. 18, look at you. Yeah, (laughs) 17, I think it was. It was a conversation that she had about um, someone who had a near-death experience. And I remember being so like drawn into that moment, right? I I, Because I was always very spiritual, right? And I always had like the craziest dreams, still have the craziest oh dreams God, and wow. like, yeah, massive like world of its own in my head. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's just, well, my imagination is is crazy. And I remember having this conversation and that back then we had like dial up internet. So <laughs> going home, trying to find stuff around near death experiences and like the meaning of life. Oh my god. At the god, age of 17. That's yeah. Mad. And well I, yeah, I got into all of this stuff at a very, very young age. And I and I think that one conversation sparked something inside of me. It was like a light went on. Oh and in that moment, I started like looking for all of these things and then questioning the meaning of life. Like, why are we here? And I was like, but if I'm here, then I want this to be the best it can be, you know, for the time I'm it. here. And then when my dad died, it just solidified it even more because he died very young. Like before he turned 40, he died. And it just like, everything was like cementing itself then from that moment. And I was like, okay, well, got one life. I can build it the way I want to. And I think I've always had, yeah, I've always had a very resilient and resilient attitude. And I've always been very self-aware um, and it's been a blessing and a curse, to be honest, because, you know, sometimes having too much awareness yeah, you know, you can't use the ignorance as bliss thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could sometimes. Um, but yeah, I I um had this awareness from a young age, and I think that's the reason I've been able to get to this place that I am in now. And I know that not everyone will find it at the same time, and that's okay. And I want to I want to say that just because I found it young doesn't mean you won't find it at all. Yeah, you know, well, in if your you life, to this they're probably they have been finding it right. Exactly, yeah. and, and it just takes like one problems. moment. Yeah, yeah it yeah, takes yeah, that one moment for something to switch on inside of you to say, you know what, I deserve more. I deserve a good life. Yeah, let me figure out how. Myself. Yeah, because yeah. I definitely didn't do that when I was seventeen because I was too busy trying to please everyone and be mm-hmm. a perfect daughter that everybody wanted. Like I was so um, invested in pleasing my dad and my mom and everything. Yeah. I was still doing that too. I was still doing that too, but I was gaining this knowledge in you secret. Were finding something that was your own yeah. interest. I was like such a robot. It, it was crazy. And I realized now like it's actually doing the work I've been doing on myself over recent years is because it felt so unsafe to be me. Like it felt so unsafe to feel all of their freaking feelings and to be a sensitive child and to grow up in that environment. Like it, it felt so unsafe. So I was literally trying to do whatever I could to feel okay, which I realized young was to do what they wanted me to do, to be mm-hmm. quiet, to lose that light that I had inside of me. Some people in my family even got jealous because of the way that I was like, you know my nature so I like was doing things to hide that away and you know and I just I disappeared so when I got to like um you know my dad's died and I like I've been living to please this man for so long I'm even doing a job that he wanted me to do and you know like the light just dying more and more and more and then for me getting into my mid-30s being shocking at relationships it is 
for a man that I decided to learn how to love myself because I thought that it would make me more attractive or something. But it was that book that changed, like that taught me something. And then I started to look for the answers everywhere. And when mm-hmm. you start to, like you say, you had that switch, then you start to see it everywhere, right? You yeah. You start to see it in books and podcasts and content and you meet people and because we are so supported and we are being guided and someone's like, oh, wow, you're ready. You're listening now. Let me show you. And yeah. Uh, Lots of people have said to me recently, I don't know if people like your clients say this to you, that like, I've literally been looking for you. Like, I literally yeah. have been looking for you. And I'm yeah. like, yeah. And then they're like, I don't even, like when I ask them, I'm like, how did you find me? And they're like, I don't actually know. I don't know how I found you. And it's just crazy, isn't it? It's, it's like crazy. the universe put you in, in a position to cross paths with each other. Yeah, for a reason, because they're like, she's this person or he or she is ready to do that work now. And I can imagine like, you're we're doing different work but you like you helping business ladies with their their marketing and stuff like that but you've been on this a massive awakening and spiritual path like that is so powerful to be able to share with like business women and change makers and leaders because that is such an important part of this journey to become like your authentic self and put that into what you create Yeah, exactly. And I think that's why I'm so passionate about conscious branding and marketing, because I want to bring that awareness to this industry that is almost like it's, I feel like the industry itself has been rife with a lot of manipulation, a lot of shady ways of doing things and a lot of icky strategies. And I think it's important for me to share that there's a different way to do things. You know, the same way I grew up, there's a different way to have a family there's a different way to do things in your business. You can build something in a really integral way. And it's important for me to share that message with, with the world. And we can create a shit ton of wealth doing it. You know, yeah. just because you're doing something in a way that feels aligned and good doesn't mean you're not going to create the type of wealth that other people have created using maybe these other types of strategies that might not feel good for you. you yeah, know, th- that's not what it's about. It's about doing things that feel good for you, but also wanting to have a level of impact, whether that, you know, and that when I say impact, and I think people think that that's like a really grand thing, actually, a, a level of impact could just be I've improved my own life. And because of that, I can have better relationships with people because of that, I can have a better relationship with my family, with my friends, my kids, whoever that is in your life. And that creates its own level of impact and that spreads slowly yeah you, know? you have a ripple effect don't yeah you? exactly effect. and or you can you can or you can be the person who wants to lead and creates a really big impact that's what I want to do right and I'm not afraid to say that you know I, I yeah tr- I want to trailblaze and I want to be different in this industry and I want to set the tone for doing things in a way that feels really good for you and aligned for you that doesn't mean you don't work hard you will work hard but you can work your level of hard. So for example, like working smart, maybe hard is the the wrong word to use, but, you know, working in a way that doesn't burn you out and doesn't, you know, throw your nervous system in the toilet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you well, don't want to do that. Important. Yeah. I, I, I love that. And this is, again, what so the healing important. journey gives you in the sense of, you know, because you do the work, you've discovered what like doesn't work for you what does work for you and and you found your way of serving right and yeah helping and I know we were talking about this when we spoke the other day that I know lots of people that have been running businesses and feel ill from yeah those strategies and I hate it when someone says to me it's all about that scarcity mindset with you know to get people to buy and I literally feel sick when people say that to me I'm like mm. I yeah I hate sending an email I'm sorry if I have because I, I know I have that this many days to go this many days to go like I do really want you to do the work and everything like that but it's like it's it doesn't feel right to me but because mm-hmm. I because we're new and we're learning about all these things you're like oh okay well I'll try and I'll try because you don't know until you try um and yeah I just think that like what you're bringing into the world is so important and look at that as well you've got your childhood all of your experiences your healing journey then you've got this 10 years of like actual marketing experience and that beautiful blend is what has birthed your business yeah and I and feel that, like that that's as well. so yeah yeah because that's like that's your purpose that's yeah. what you, your soul came here to do and you've created this thing that only you can create in this bespoke way and that's like with me as well like 
having the trauma that I've been through and the experiences that I've had being like I was in the corporate world in like IT change training so Mm -hmm. I feel like everything that I do every trauma experience that I go through like in my journey I'm like what are the steps and like how can I make this really simple and what is the process and um, what is the strategy for having a healthier relationship? What is the strategy for like um, being an empath and stopping feeling all those feelings? Like what? And that's how my brain works. And that's how I'm able to communicate and share. Mm-hmm. So for some people that works really, really well. And they're like, I'm their person. But for somebody else, I won't be their person. And it will be somebody else. And yeah. if you're doing your healing work, you're going to uncover what your thing is. So I reckon exactly. we all have businesses and be like, you know, serving in all of our own unique ways. And then the world would just be way better. <laughs> oh, yeah, 100 percent. I think there's something special about everyone. When my clients come to me and say that there's nothing special about what I do. And I'm like, there is. You're just not you're just not seeing it yet. You know, there is definitely something special about what you do. And I think that's why I went so heavily into brand work, because I feel like there's a lot of um there's, there's, there's not a lot of safety around brand work, right? There's not a lot of safety around being authentic. People tell you to be authentic. What does that even mean? Yeah, and right? they don't actually don't, mean that either. No, and it's like, <laughs> okay, yeah, you, you, you want to you be yourself, right? Of course you want to be yourself and you want to run your business the way you want to run it. But do you feel safe to do that? Do you, actually feel, do you actually feel safe to use your voice in the digital space where everyone can hear it if they come across your content? You know what I mean? Is Do you actually feel safe to show your face on camera? There's a lot of work that goes into authenticity. Mm-hmm. And, you know, people throw the the word around like it's just something to say, right? Mm-hmm. And it's not just something to say because you better mean it. If you're, if you're telling someone to be authentic, you better give them a way to be authentic. Yeah. You know, you better create that safety. And I think that's why it was so important for me to bring in to my one-to-one program, someone who can actually help people feel safe right Mm -hmm. and that's a big part of what I do now I I bought someone in specifically to help people feel safe in showing up Mm -hmm. so that you know you can because she helped me she helped me I I get goosebumps talking about her because she's amazing right and I think just doing this work with someone who makes you feel safe is going to help you show up better in your business in your life in your relationships whatever it looks like for you because safety is a big part of it as well yeah, definitely, because it's got you've got to be safe to feel like you can be the true you and to get rid of the layers. And that's why, like, actually, authenticity is about bravery and courage. Because, yeah. Like, you know, the other day when I got triggered because somebody was upset with what I, what I had said, what I'd written, that I everything about me just seized up and I was like, I can't do this, I can't do this anymore, I'm going to have to give up, I'm going to have to run away. And it's like, um, because it didn't feel safe. So having the tools and the strategies to go back into your safety, again, helps you go back to meet yourself. Yeah. To, to, to be that person and to shed those layers and to really get to know like your real self. Like years ago when you were 17, you didn't even know who that person was because you'd just been conditioned to be told who you were. Mm-hmm. like that's again the beauty of it that you actually uncover who you truly are not who who you thought like if somebody had asked me 10 years ago who I thought I was I would say something very different to what I would say today yeah being on that journey of like healing and growth which has allowed me to uncover that and that's what um like it gives us as well but um I was just wondering you know you talked a lot about your granddad who seems like quite the character were your grandmas <laughs> around when you were yeah so she was um she was really nice to me she wasn't very nice to my mom yeah, so cool. you know that was that was a situation in itself and I didn't really see that dynamic play out until I was probably 13 I think like when I hit my teen years and I started noticing that I was becoming like more mature in my body and my way of thinking and that's when my relationship also changed with her, with my grandma because now she saw me as someone who is eventually going to get married and needs that training. Mm. You know, that 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 felt like a weird dynamic and a weird shift. And then I also saw the way she was with my mum and how much she put that pressure on her. And that relationship was quite strained. And it was difficult to watch because I had this weird 
um, almost like guilt around loving her and hating her at the same time. Yeah, I think a lot of people could relate to that. Yeah. In our communities, because like how many stories are there of the mother-in-law being just a nightmare like yeah and and I saw that play out right and I thought it was really normal actually before I started questioning things that were going on in I don't think you question things as as a young child I think you just kind of deal with it but then when I saw it more and more play out and how it was affecting my mom because then it was directly affecting me because my mom would get frustrated and then she would take her anger out on me and my sister Mm. so then it was like this ripple effect of this trauma kind of running through the the lines of the family mm. and and ending with with me and yeah the the relationship was was difficult and she passed away actually right before I got married and I didn't have a great relationship with her before she died and I think I had to do a bit of healing work around that because I had this weird experience with her. I almost feel like it's not something that I fully put to bed yet and I think that's probably something I'm gonna have to revisit because it's sparked something in me right now while we're having this conversation Ooh. but yeah you know when you think like oh, actually, have I, have I, <laughs> yeah have I actually dealt with that I don't know she's never the person that comes to the top of my list when I think about trauma but in <laughs> yeah. some way she did but of course she, there, there is yeah because she's still controlling you in in her own way and yeah telling you who to be and like maybe not feel, making you feel safe and all of those things and how about your mum's mum was she around when you were growing up yeah so she actually um lived in India most of her life but then she had a big accident and moved to the UK so she was actually in a wheelchair mm. and she was the most amazing woman ever yeah. like she was so kind she was she was like the grandma that everyone wants <laughs> you yeah. know she was like that person and I didn't get to see her very often when I was young because my mom wouldn't be allowed to go and see her very often. So when she was allowed by my family, bizarre, right, that this happens, um, when she was allowed to go and see her and she only lived down the road, five minutes walk, oh right? And she wasn't allowed to go and see her when she wanted to. So when she was allowed to go like every few months, months, yeah. <laughs> just down the road, um, it was, I, I would go with her and... I developed this really beautiful relationship with her, like in those brief moments we had together. And after my dad died, I started seeing her more and more. I was seeing her almost every day for years before she died. Mm -hmm. And she was like the best, but she also went through a lot of trauma with my, my granddad, like her husband before he died because they both were in the accident. He passed away from the accident. She went through a lot of trauma because he was very abusive towards her. And that's what my mom had grown up seeing. So it's like, it was playing out on both sides of the family. Yeah. And then that's why your mum thought the way she's being treated in her marriage is just normal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because I think she was she'd grown up with that. But my mum, I was told, which is which is maybe where I get this um f- like fighting spirit and talk from maybe a little bit. But my mum was actually very um strong in her opinions. And mm-hmm. she didn't lose that in that ma- she didn't lose it in the marriage, but it was dimmed down it was almost knocked out of her over the years of trauma and abuse she'd experienced in that family Mm. she'd become quiet and you know in the end developed psychosis and schizophrenia because I think that they just tried to put her in this box and she didn't want to be in yeah and it was sad because yeah and and you know as a result of that she would lash out on her own kids Mm. so you know it's it's really sad because she was like I think she was a lot like me actually she was like a bird and she wanted to fly free but she didn't she wasn't born in the right where in, in at the right time to do that she wasn't born into opportunity to do that so I'm very fortunate to have been given that opportunity even though my life was hard yeah. I also acknowledge the fact that I was brought up in a different time and now I, I'm able to step into this person yeah. that maybe she wanted to be and she wasn't yeah, she didn't have the opportunity because you're breaking a cycle, aren't you? First yeah. of all, you're not, mar- you're not in a marriages that are abusive, like you know, your mom. Yeah, I chose my own partner as well. I didn't let yeah. anyone choose him for me. Yeah, you earn your own money, you're like um raising your daughter how you want, you know. Yeah, there's so many things that you're breaking. And I also have a great relationship with my in-laws, <laughs> like yeah, me too. amazing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, they're like the parents I always wanted, you know, yeah. and I have such you an amazing selected them for a reason. Yeah, like, you know, my, my mother-in-law went went away for two months um, last year and I was calling her every day to talk to her because I was like, you know, I want to, I have that relationship with her because she's accepted me with open arms and it's like, that's nice to have, you know, yeah. finally. Something yeah, well, I always wanted. Well, that's what you deserve because 
you know you're worthy of love and affection yeah and if I didn't have that I wouldn't have that relationship I would have said no not doing this not repeating this you know your boundaries and everything like that right um and yeah so this is what you've learned from your mum's story and your grandma's stories and Mm -hmm. how it can really inform us when we choose to live life on our own terms based on their stories like for my for for my two grandmas like I've got a picture of one of them in here um so very similar like my dad's mum wasn't probably very nice to my mum um initially when she got sick she was um but she was like she adored me and my brother like super I feel like emotional just talking about but she adored me and my brother she was abused in her marriage like violently she got sick when she was like 50 with kidney issues which is basically just fear Mm -hmm. she's been married at like 13 she lost babies and then my my mum's mum she's like lost her mum during childbirth had to raise all the all the kids um like I've heard that her dad was an alcoholic. Um, she didn't really want to come to this country. She didn't really want to get married. She didn't want to be away from her family. She was also such a sweetheart. She sounds like your mom's mom. And but so much pain and suffering, and so much like she was very um, she took her own life, my mom's mom, and um, like so much suffering and pain that was unresolved. Both of them, like these women that just don't have choices, don't have options. Mm-hmm. And they I remember being like my I was five when dad's mum died, but she was telling me even then who I should be. She's like, you shouldn't be talking, um, come and watch me cook. She never used to ask that of my brother, you know, all of those things. They were already doing it to me, what had been done to them. You can marry this person, you can't marry this, you can you can't go like I was controlled a lot as as a child as well. And, you know, even though they didn't have these options, they couldn't even see what they were repeating and putting. Yeah, you don't know what you don't know. No, exactly. And they both adored me so much. And, you know, to be like, oh, my God, you're just telling me to like, it's just it, it feels crazy now. And also to see how much they were both suffering with the lack of choice that they had and like my mum's mum she like my mum is totally her favorite and my mum was in an abusive marriage she tried to leave um my granddad made her go back she she, that must have been horrible for her Mm mum she's an empathic person but she said nothing and never spoke about it because she's not allowed she's not allowed to say her point she's not allowed to have a point of view she's not allowed to be different like she's somebody that took her life because she didn't think she had anything once her husband had gone and her grandchildren. And isn't that just so sad? That yeah, is sad. So I'm like, I'm going to be 80 and I'm still going to be on my soapbox talking about this stuff. <laughs> I don't care if I'm a grandma. Like I'll still be doing my work and I'll still be making a difference. And I do, like I think of them too a lot in all of my work that I do because I think, you know, like I'm going to get my show now, but just like, they went through so much for us to be able to do what we do and yeah no they didn't do it consciously like they weren't choosing that but that's why we all have to break that cycle because we can and they couldn't yeah and I think that's right sorry I didn't mean to cry <laughs> no that's okay I've cried so a lot important. this week and I feel like I'm tearing up a little bit right now just like listening to but the story because so I can sad relate so yeah it's just so sad like what they've been through and then we can be really toxic because we're like well you know she did this and they did this and it was like this but it's like look look at all of the trauma look at the even your granddad right like he wasn't just the man like that for no reason there's a yeah like I've no idea what his story is I have no idea (laughs) why he was yeah I don't know like no I've never been able to speak to anyone who yeah can tell me um like I I knew my great-grandma you know, she was alive until she was 117. But she hardly spoke. Yeah. But she, I heard that she wasn't a very nice person. That's the one thing I did hear. And I wonder sometimes why he wanted to move so far away from his entire family, go to a new country and be away from his entire family. You know, what what happened to him? Yeah. That he became the man that he became where he needed to control the women, right? Where his oh, mother wow. controlled him, maybe. I don't know. I'm oh, speculating yeah. here. But from what yeah. I hear, I can put pieces together. Yeah, well, sometimes we only need to know a little bit about our story to figure it out, like to put yeah. it together. Like, you know, like um, my dad's um, dad was quite narcissistic, alcoholic, and I know that he lost his parents really young and he was pretty much an orphan and um, he was very poor. Like I can kind of put the pieces together of mm-hmm. how somebody becomes like that and that kind of, you know, where the darkness wins and like yeah. 
or like our granddads, the darkness one. And yeah. Them, right? And and for our dads as well, because I know you lost your dad young and I lost my dad at 26, the darkness one. And I think yeah. like where we're, we've done the work and the trauma healing work, so the darkness does not win because it could no. have taken us too, right? It could have. It could have definitely taken us. And I, I saw that play out with, you know, my siblings. I don't want to go into their stories because that's their story, but, you know, to some degree. And and now everyone's coming out of it. And I, I'm so grateful that, you know, as a collective, like there's five of us, right? Yeah, there's a lot, yeah, there's a lot of us. And I'm the eldest of, of all of us. You know, we're all healing in our own way. We're all yeah. moving through what happened to us in our own way. But there's a willingness to want to do it, which is, you know, amazing to see. And I think sometimes just one person having the willingness kind of sparks it in someone else, you know, especially someone who's in close proximity to you. Yeah, and, definitely. Well, yeah. you've been such an example to them for you, like all the choices that you're making and the way that you're living life and the way that you're breaking patterns. Mm-hmm. And that is like that healing ripple effect. I think it works both ways because it's not just like, I, I don't feel like just because I'm the eldest and I've done some of these things first, I also see a lot of stuff that I admire about my siblings, like my youngest, they're twins. Um, they're um, 19, 20. Oh my God, they're going to kill me if, if I forget their age. So I'm not even going <laughs> to. I think you've already forgotten their age. <laughs> yeah, I've actually forgotten their age. Um, but yeah, they they are so brave in the way that they've handled themselves through really difficult situations. Mm-hmm. They were very young when my dad died. They were six years old and I was 20. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they've they've done amazingly. And, you know, they've had their own fair share of problems, like growing up and dealing with stuff. But, you know, they've, they've done really amazing work. And like even my other siblings, you know, in their own way, they've done their work. And I can only commend everyone for actually taking the step that's amazing it, right? there's five of you yeah been doing it that's so I mean like yeah. a lot of stories I hear there might be just one person and that their siblings are just not doing it as well and they're suffering a lot and it's really really hard um I know with don't get me wrong we've had that yeah yeah everyone's kind of coming I out feel like every, coming out of it now I mean our 20s yeah. they were a bit of a mess I'm not gonna lie um I think everyone had stuff coming up I think I'm I'm probably um like I'm probably the most active and the most vocal about dealing with this stuff at the moment yeah. um amongst my family but and I also have probably the biggest amount of boundaries <laughs> but, yeah you know my family is sometimes like well, we don't see you and I'm like there's a reason you don't see me all the time you make me you feel know. Ill, so. yeah so I need to I, I I I understand that you know that everyone's got their own their own pace and their own way to heal and I appreciate and respect that and I have my own way and you know I try not I, I try not to interfere too much in other way other people's ways and I expect the same in return like let me deal with my stuff yeah let me have my boundaries and when I'm ready to talk or reconnect about something then I'm I'm open to that but I'm I'm the person that I need to be right now to to, to deal with the stuff that I'm going through yeah and uh you know at the end of the day as well like you know it's your choice to have your business to talk about these things which maybe they might not be comfortable because I get a lot of people ask me like when am I going to have my brother on and um I just you know my brother's been doing his work he's definitely getting better but that's not just not going to happen right now that's just not who he is and I wouldn't ever put that on him and like force him to get on here um and like because that's not what he wants to do with his trauma he wants to get on with his life and do something different um and like you said you've just got to respect that and yeah yeah, everyone's got their own time really big mouths (laughs) (laughs) I think it's just the 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 way that we've kind of transitioned into this world isn't it we are you know step our our version of stepping into power is talking about it in in a public domain like this their version might be completely different they might do it in private and that's completely okay I think everyone yeah, has exactly. their own way right and I think as long as there's respect around that because all, no all issue, of our right? souls are different and we're all here for a different reason like and I feel like such a connection with you because I think that we're both like the little girls inside of us are like no we have to make a difference about this we can't let people carry on like this yeah I'm the type of person like, who can't stand injustices no I'm me too gonna... it really upsets yeah. me like yeah. um, I watched uh, it was just a film 
but I watched The Whale the other day mm-hmm. and I just was sobbing so much when I came out because I was like, there's just so much pain in this world and it doesn't have to be like that. Like I was yeah. like, I have to. It just doesn't have to be this way. It's I know. Like- I get deeply affected by, um, I, like I went through a period of watching a lot of true crime and had to stop. Had to stop yeah, because I, I, crime, but I know yeah, I, I I can't watch them anymore. Like I I had to stop because I'm an empath, and I was getting so like I it's like I was traumatizing myself at moments where I was like, there's people out there going through this right now. Like I, and these yeah. are the thoughts going yeah, through my I head sometimes. Too. I think um, I really need to watch my content because I still yeah. have it like I love a true crime oh yeah I've stopped it's it now really I messed up and I don't know what that's about but I really yeah yeah I think I think it's like the <laughs> curiosity right the curiosity brings you in and then you're like oh my gosh why did I watch that now I feel really strange and there's people out there who do awful things and you know I think for me that that stuff like yeah it's obviously very you know it's very interesting and you you have this curious mind to to go into it to see why people do stuff like this but at the same time for me that's also my own personal boundary now I have you know muted all content any content around like anything to do with kids or you know anything where there's people murdering other people I just can't I can't do it to myself like I can't I can't function yeah I can't function right if I if I because I I feel like I'm being traumatized because I feel so deeply about the things that people are going through yeah I cannot I cannot watch these things because it's it feels like you know like that's part of me that's you know that that's being affected by that and that's happening it's it feels like I'm it's happening to me almost even though it's not um but my experience of it is so (laughs) physical and like emotional I can't I just can't you know And, and then I can't get it out of my head for for weeks and months sometimes you know I, I just can't do it. I can't watch it because I, I can't, I feel too much. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to no, feel I that. I, mean, I think I'm going to have to have a similar um, review of what I want because my, my husband's really into things like horrors and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I'll, like, I'll watch them with him and I do enjoy them. Horrors are right because I feel like they're just not even real. But but yeah, th- I mean, this film that I went to see, I actually wanted to watch it because it's about human suffering. Mm-hmm. And, but then I was just like, so sad by human suffering because just like yourself I'm just like why why do these things happen (laughs) and also I want to fix them all and I can't I know (laughs) if only we could right but as as we we do our work in our own little way in the way that we know best yeah I suppose that's all we can do no exactly we just create our little healing ripple effect right yeah hopefully somebody listening to this is has been inspired by our breaking of the cycle and will go and do a little baby step to break the cycle in their families and change the stories that their grandmas had too but Mm -hmm. um, it's been amazing having you I feel like we've gone over time so I'm sorry about that but (laughs) um, did you want to explain um like how people can work with you what you have got coming on at the moment yeah so at the moment um you can find me uh, on instagram tiktok pinterest um at souls lemonade um i will give all my details to uh Mampri so she can put it somewhere yeah, yeah on this episode um and if you want to work with me i have a one-to-one container uh so you can work with me over an extended period of time but if you just want to try it out i also have vip days so we work together in a shorter frame of time it's a smaller investment and also if you want some support if you're a business owner if you're a coach healer or service provider in the digital space and you want some support with your branding then I also have a free course that you can jump into it's a three-part course won't take you very long very simple Um, and that's really to help you gain a better understanding of your brand and really what you're here to do your mission your purpose your vision um, your core messaging and really how you position yourself and who you want to work with and who you're called to work with as well so yeah it helps you go into all of that fundamental stuff if you're in the early stages oh I love that because I think a lot of people that listen to me and um, are drawn to my work are people that are on their healing journey but maybe haven't quite made that transition into Mm -hmm. how they're going to serve but they are they are empaths they're like they feel like they want to help people but business feels like this scary thing and they don't 
that is. I would try to make it really simple because it's it's for the person who hasn't quite figured that stuff out yet. Perfect. Uh, yeah. So yeah, yeah, if you if you want to jump into that, then that's open as well. Um, and my DMs are always open if you want to just have a conversation. I just love talking to people. <laughs> Yes, yeah, well, you're fabulous to talk to, so people should definitely get, because that's how we talk to one another. Um, it has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on, listening to me cry. You know, that was great. It's been so lovely. I yeah, love it's it. been amazing yeah. for me. Yeah, it's been amazing for me too. So thank you so much for having me here. And I'm sure we'll continue this conversation other ways in yeah, on other platforms. And I definitely yeah. need to get you on my <laughs> podcast because you are amazing amazing you are amazing as well thank you so much for sharing your story and for being here today thank you Mambri. and there we have it guys an episode completed i hope you enjoyed it and it raised a load of awareness in your mind there was alarm bells going you were all like ding that's totally me because that's what i was like when i started this journey and that is the start of the process finding out this information and realizing it has happened in your own life so i really hope it was helpful and before the next episode coming out next wednesday be sure to check us out on instagram so it's hearts underscore underscore happiness also we have a youtube channel where i share the videos i create for instagram on so you can check that out they come on about once a week and then we also have a facebook group if you want to join to carry on the conversation i want to create a community where we're all talking about our very real experiences and traumas and then there is also my website called heartshappiness.co.uk which you can check out to join our mailing list so that as i create new services and support tools for you all you're the first to find out and i have a freebie on there so definitely check that out it's five books that transformed my healing so if you really want to kickstart and you know you're liking the content in here these books are like the basis of so much of my knowledge so definitely check that out and i will speak to you next week i'm so excited to continue this journey with you to help you to find your own heart's happiness take care